Well guys, thank you to your decision for visiting this video on the Luo online YouTube channel. In this video, I'm going to take you through the Luo people who the Luo tribe of uh, Uganda, the one of the Luo tribe. But before, may I request you to subscribe to this channel as you wait for other kind of this video. Alu are an analytic kind of people who in Uganda mainly live in Nebi, Zombo and Arua districts in northwestern Uganda and northeastern Democratic Republic of Congo or DRC, north of Lake Alba. This region is typically referred in Uganda as the West Nile. So Alu are one of the West Nile last, one of the West Nile tribe. They are part of the larger Luo group, as I told you earlier, and their language is closely related to the Choli language. Some Alu speak Lendu language. You must remember that the Alu chiefdom is mostly or mainly the one which was unaffected by the Ugandan ban on traditional monarchies in 1966. In the neighborhood in DRC, the Lu chiefdom are organized into different monarchies, namely Angal, A-N-G-A-L, Alu, Juganda, J-U-G-A-N-D-A, Jukot, J-U-K-O-T-H. Jukot, the thing means the people of the rain. Mukambu, M-U-K-A-M-B-U, and then the Junam, ring that referring to the people of the lakes or uh, rivers. Now, the location of the Alu people. Alu territory occupies the northwestern shores of Lake Albert and of the Albert Nile, which runs out of it. The lacustrine and riverine areas have an elevation of an area which runs about 600 meters, and the land rises from the lake at a steep escape. Capman. Farther north, it rises gradually to Ili Plateaus, which averages from 1,500 to 1,800 meters, and which have the most rainfall, 100 to 200 centimeters, the most fertile soil, and the densest population, and as well as the coolest climate in the region. In contrast, the shore areas are very hot and humid. In Uganda, the density ranges from 25 persons per square kilometer in the lowlands to 43 persons per square kilometers in the islands. Now, which language does the Alu people speak? Most members of the group speak Alu, a language which is closely related to Dojonam, Acholi, and Adola, or the Jopadola. The Jonam, Acholi, and Jopadola, we, some of them we have talked about them on the YouTube channel. Some uh, we are yet to present to you uh, about them. Some Alu speak Lendu and some speak the Kebo. The Alu language dialects vary very considerably. The Highland Alu, referred to as the Okoro, speak a slightly different dialect from the Lowland Alu called the Jonam. So, the Jonam are the Lowland Alu and the Okoro are the Highland Alu. That's technically the correct one. And it might be technically difficult for a Lowland Alu who the Highland Alu to understand its other kinsmen. It may be difficult for them to understand the language in between themselves. As I said earlier, the Alu chiefdom is technically the only one which was not affected by Uganda ban on chiefdom in 1966. That thing and about the government. All the Lu king are referred to as the Ruach, R-A-W-O-T-H, which is typically or technically the only difference with the Chuli is uh, Chuli calls it Rot, R W O T, but the Lu calls it Rot, R W O T H. So the difference is the addition of the H at the end. This is applicable to most of the Lu chiefs and kings around the world. The current Lu king is called Rot Philip Raoul Olake, whose coronation was in 2010. Uh, thank you very much. Very big respect to the Lu, uh, Lu chief. The, Paramount leader of Lu, uh, His Highness Lake. May God continue to bless you. A moment of respect for you. When the Europeans arrived, the Lu kingdom were organized into ten chiefdoms, namely 
dengan di Uganda, Jukor, Mukambu, Wapalara, Panduru, Ukuru, Padeo, and lastly, the Panyekano. The Panyekano Lu, I think that's the, these are the ones with the sweetest name, right? <laughs> I, 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 I would choose to, to change my clan to become a Panyekana Lu. It's nice. Based on the royal spearhead bearing tradition, the Ubimu of a Lu tribe, H.M. Philip Ulake Rauni the third, is the supreme ruler of the entire Lu tribe, with his capital at Kalatiak Winam in Zombo district of Uganda. Much blessing to the palace of Lu in the Kalatiak Winam of the Zombo district. In Angal, the current chief is Rod Dijalore, Rod Dijalore Sage II. He took over from his late father, Amanda, who died in 1998. All these sub-clans and tribes of the Lu descended directly from the lineage of Chief Nipi, the Nipi. You know the story of Labunga and Nipi, although I'm very doubtful of some points there. I, I to me, I believe some anguish was created by the Europeans to bring conflict among the children and the Lu. But anyway, we leave it that way. So now, what is the day-to-day -day life of Alu. Traditionally, the Alu live in grass touch ash, just like other Lu tribes. The homesteads in Alu clans are in the central territory. This helps to keep the territory under their control or in balance. It helps to keep the territory under their control or in balance. <laughs> the Alu were farmer herders. The Alu grew and grow millet, cassava, maize, sweet potatoes, spinach, and pumpkins. They herded cattle goats and chicken. Goats and chicken were very important sources of meat, while cattle were used for marriage, but barely the number has gone down these days. Other very important sources in Alu were salt, forest and wild animals, so Alu people were blessed with salt. These were all protected from other clans. Other tribes were not to touch it. In the drought season, fishing was important. The, the large herds of animals in the while Alu used to arm them for other additional external source of meat so that not to exhaust the domestic ones, the goats, the chicken and the cattle at home. They eat the one in the wild just like other uh, Luo tribes like Lao, Jopadola and the Chuli used to do it, the Jum Jum. The we the Luo used to keep the goats, the cattle, the chicken at home for welcoming visitors for marriage for the beauty of the home, for the show of wealth, and used to eat only the ones in the bush. Actually, in any case, to eat the ones at home means it has died by itself. In a loose society, men did most of the work. They had the domestic animals, grew the crops, went for hunting, built the huts, hunted fish, and also dominated political life. The women were responsible for keeping the house, keeping the children and also cooking. Many of the men jobs are bound to strict times. They hunted in large groups just once a month. That is just for example. The sexes are segregated by their loo. A husband and a wife have their own separate aunt. The men used to sleep alone and the women and children also sleep alone. Then there's a separate age group also which sleeps alone. So the sexes were separated. You don't sleep with your wife. You don't sleep with your husband. The husband sleeps with another, with this other fellow husband. Mm. By this I don't mean homosexuality. I mean sleeping in the same heart or house together. They also eat separately. Women and men rarely mixed socially. <laughs> so I, this is something which is now gone, is eradicated. I think men used to meet with women. Only maybe when they want to get it. something too technically funny there. I don't know whether you're also getting it. This behavior is not enforced by men, but it is in the women's best interest to protect their cleanliness and purity, not to get in contact with another man, but strictly the husband. It is to make sure that no other man have sex with her, but only the husband whenever they decide to do so. The Lu men are very close and social with the men from their own clan. They hunt, they fish, <laughs> they farm, and they go to war together. And that is the spirit of the Lu people. They had their patrols from collisions against rivals together. Since the Lu men stay in the clan, they are born in and women move to the clan of their husband. The men are typically more social, have more friends, 
and a wider social network than the women, which is technically something happening in other Luo people. This is a very important factor in male dominance in the Luo tribe. All men of a particular patrilineage tribe use land to plant crops for their families. Let's look at history of the Luo people. Their tradition states that they migrated from southern Sudan with other Luo following the Nile banks. Their original homeland is said to have been Rombek, Rombek in Bayel Gazelle in South Sudan, on the confluence of the Nile and Bayel Gazelle rivers. They moved south along the Nile to Bungu, whence they dispersed. Some moving on to Bunyol, others to Echuli, yet others to eastern Uganda and on to the Nyanza province of Kenya. While the Alu moved westwards to West Nile, historians claim, however, that the Alu people are not purely Lu. Just like some of them claim that now are not purely Lu, some also claim to other tribes. That is where we need to be very careful because I think those are strategies to divide us not to be united. But they say they are product of intermarriage between the Luo, the Lendu, and the Okebo. But since the Luo people maintain the Luo speech and other Luo customs, they should be grouped that way, that way, strictly that way. And Alu, Alu. The economy in Alu, subsistence and commercial activities. Finger millet, the stable food, has been partially displaced by cassava which colonial authorities impel for the Luo people to plant as a food security against famine. Flour from both crops is usually mixed in the cooking and mingled. Maize has been extremely grown during the 20th century. A great part of it is used for brewing beans, simsim, or in the English is called sesame, spinach, both the wild one and cultivated one, and at lower elevations, shea butter, shea butter nuts, that is the ya or the yao, are important elements of the diet. In addition to cattle, the Lu raise chicken, goats, and some sheep. Edible ants and seasonal swarms of grasshopper are further supplements. Elephant, antelope, buffaloes, rhinoceroses, hippopotamuses, crocodiles, edible rats, rabbits, porcupines were once hunted, but government regulations, population growth, and scarcity of game have brought almost an end the hunting of these animals, except for the last three. The last three are porcupine, rabbits, and rabbit, and rat. The island areas consist of mainly grassland cleared from the pebble, primeval forest, the lowland areas of savanna bush. Everywhere cattle are kept to some extent, but the floor is best in the islands, which have been favored more than the lowlands to the increase of human population. Cotton is grown mainly in the midland areas. Since the 1960s, Arabica kopi has been planted extensively in the highlands, superseding cattle as the main source of cash. The loo of the lowland fish in the lakes and rivers, trading smoke dried fish to the islands. Some uh, fish like the agara, uh, agara kimuchere, miatlo or something. Uh, the dried fish with uh, rice is so nice, more than the other thing, you know. They fish it to the islands and neighboring people, even out to Zaire. Mineral salt is obtained from a few localities, and vegetable salt is made by filtering the ash of suitable grasses. Industrial arts, the Okedo, an ethnic subgroup of the Lu, formerly melted iron and forged tools and weapons, skins, leaves, fibers, and back cloth were worn as clothing until after World War II, when imported cotton came to be universally adopted. Houses, utensils, and musical instruments are still made domestically by individuals who have developed special skills from local materials that are accessible to all. The houses are now usually roofed with imported iron corrugated sheets instead of local grass touch. However, and the availability of imported utensils and musical instruments has caused local production to dwindle. Looking at trade in Alu, there has always been some exchange of salt, iron goods, fish, livestock, and foodstuffs, but regular markets did not develop until after World War II. Retail shops and administrative centers can be found at a few 
occupant. Some non-Africans, especially Arabs and African Muslims, were prominent in the early development of these retail and administrative centers. But the Indo-Pakistani retailers, pervasive throughout Uganda, were confined to the district headquarters town of Arua, which laid outside a little Teto, land tenure in Alu, or the land ownership. All Alu had free access to land through kinship and descent. Most people lived in territory that was under the control of a corporate descent group to which people belonged by a Gantic descent. But some might also live in another country or another territory to which they were linked through a mother's brother or other close cognatic relatives. The division of labor among the Lu is the last thing we are looking at right now. Traditionally, there were clearly division of labor among the Lu people, typically according to the sex. Women were responsible for the domestic economy, preparing, cooking, and serving food, including brewing beer, and for some of them, distilling spirit, collecting fuel, and maintaining the walls and floors of houses. Men cleared the land and owed the fields. Women weeded and harvested. The division of labor has come or has become more diversified. Both men and women work as teachers, shopkeepers, and medical staff. For example, Odadis, nurses. Many women pursue careers away from home, especially around Kampala. Now with this, I would like to appreciate you for watching all this video. Mark your timetable or the calendar. Every Wednesday is for the, the Ugandan Luo people. So we are continuing with Ugandan Luo people, shifting their Luo next week on Wednesday. But don't forget to subscribe so that you get those videos. And still, other more videos like news, entertainment, gets here at any time and also at a little tribes. Tomorrow we are going to Ethiopia. Don't forget to subscribe. The Lou of Ethiopia. Thanks and bye bye.